And I want to go straight to the heart of the book, The Grand Design, with this central claim, because there is a law of gravity, the universe can and will create itself out of nothing. Now, perhaps the first question to ask is, what does Hawking mean when he uses the word nothing? The universe can and will create itself out of nothing. Because notice the assumption in the first part of that statement. Because there is a law of gravity. That is an assertion of existence. Because there is something, the universe will create itself out of nothing. It's a very odd way to start, isn't it? Hawking assumes that there is a law of gravity. But one might want to be generous and presume that he also assumes that gravity exists. For the simple reason that an abstract mathematical law on its own would be vacuous with nothing to describe, a point to which I shall return. But the main issue surely is this. Gravity or a law of gravity is not nothing. If Hawking is using that word in its usual philosophically correct sense of non-being, if he's not, he should have told us. So the heart of this book appears to be an assertion that the universe is simultaneously created from nothing and from something, which I do not regard as a very promising start. Now, of course, I am aware that when physicists talk about nothing, they often appear to mean a quantum vacuum, which is manifestly not nothing. And Hawking alludes to it later in the book. We are a product, he says, of quantum fluctuations in the very early universe. I'm tempted to suspect that a lot of this is a bit too much ado about nothing. <laughs> now, I know it's late in the morning for logic, ladies and gentlemen. But I just pointed out to you what I think is the first level of self-contradiction in Hawking's statement. But I believe there to be three. And I have subsequently tried to invent a sentence in English that also contains three levels of self-contradiction. And I haven't been able to do so. So my challenge to you is to try and copy Hawking by producing something parallel to it. Let's analyze it a bit further. The universe can and will create itself. Now, if I say X creates Y, I'm presupposing the existence of X in order to bring Y into existence. That is what the word means. So if I say X creates X, I am presupposing the existence of X to account for the existence of X. Well, this is obviously self-contradictory, and it's logically incoherent, even if we put x equal to the universe. To presuppose the existence of the universe, to account for the existence of the universe, sounds like something out of Alice in Wonderland, not science. Now, that's a second distinct level of contradiction. The first one, you will recall, is the universe is created out of something which is nothing. The second is it creates itself. But then the notion that the law of gravity, that a law of nature explains the existence of the universe, is also self-contradictory. Since a law of nature by definition surely depends for its own existence on the prior existence of the nature it purports to describe. And I shall come back to that later. So I would submit to you, however provocatively it may seem to you, that the main conclusion of the grand design turns out to be a triple self-contradiction. Philosophers just might be tempted to comment, so that's what comes of saying philosophy is dead. Oxford chemist Peter Atkins, whom I believe is to be the subject of a debate later, believes, I quote, that space-time generates its own dust in the process of its own self-assembly. Atkins dubs this the cosmic bootstrap principle, referring, of course, to the self-contradictory idea of a person lifting himself by pulling on his own bootlaces. Well, our Oxford colleague 
Keith Ward is surely right to say that Atkins' view of the universe is as blatantly self-contradictory as the name he gives to it, pointing out that it is logically impossible for a cause to bring about some effect without already being in existence. Ward concludes, between the hypothesis of God and the hypothesis of a cosmic bootstrap, there's no competition. We were always right to think that persons or universes who seek to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps are forever doomed to failure. What this goes to show, ladies and gentlemen, is that nonsense remains nonsense even when it's talked by world-famous scientists. <laughs> but what it serves to obscure, what serves to obscure the illogicality is the fact that the statements are made by scientists. Because it seems to me in the whole contemporary debate, one of the dangers, a real danger, is that we confuse a statement by a scientist with a statement of science. Not all statements by scientists are statements of science, and therefore they do not enjoy whatever authority you ascribe to science itself. Immense prestige and authority do not compensate for faulty logic. Now, the worrying thing about all of this to me is that this illogical notion of the universe creating itself out of a nothing which is a something by a law of gravity which appears to exist without gravity itself possibly um, is not a peripheral point in the book The Grand Design. It's the key argument. And if the key argument is invalid, in one sense there's little left to say.